And welcome once again to Flashpoints. I'm Bob Orr, joined by Juan Zarate, our national security analyst. Juan, good to see you. Good to see you too, Bob. So the U.S. intelligence community has come out with what it does every year, a global assessment of worldwide threats. What did you see in the list and in the presentation that surprised you or impressed you? Well, it's actually three things, Bob. First is the variety and scope of the threats. I mean, Director uh, Clapper, the DNI, uh, put it this way, and he's been in the intelligence community for a half century. I have not experienced a time when we've been beset by more crises and threats around the globe. And so it's a variety of non-state threats like terrorist groups and organized crime, state actors like North Korea, uh, festering crisis regions like Syria and North Africa, and trends that are potentially problematic, secu food security, uh, demographic bulges in sub-Saharan Africa. So, it, you know, what's, what's revealing is how varied the threat is and what the intelligence community is uh, re required to do. The second thing that's interesting is the ranking of the threats. First and foremost is cyber. Right, it's not terrorism. It's not terrorism We've come anymore. through a terrorism decade, but cyber is number one. Yeah, and terrorism is, isn't even number two. Counterintelligence is number two, especially in the wake of Snowden. Uh, and then counterterrorism is third. The other thing that was interesting was um, the reflection on Syria. Uh, a real admission, again, something we've talked about, that Syria really has become a fulcrum of uh, the global terrorist problem that we're facing and is going to continue to be a major problem. Uh, that begins to shift the narrative and the policy focus on Syria in terms of what do we do given the rise of these Al-Qaeda-like uh, affiliates there that are continuing to fight and battle and grow in strength. Uh, the DNI clapper, it was a pretty frightening uh, assessment when he said, what's going on in Syria here? Are these two Al-Qaeda linked groups carving out where they can yeah. uh, some space, operating space. He suggested maybe space to set up uh, camps, training centers, with the idea that these radicals could then go back to their home countries and cause real damage. I think there's a real fear about this. No, that's right. And, and if you take a step back, you have to ask yourself the question, does Syria become the new Afghanistan in the context of what evolves in terms of the terrorist threat? We've said it here before. Yeah. You know, in some ways, the cauldron of conflict in Syria uh, is allowing the spawning or the adaptation of a new brand of al-Qaeda, um, uh, one that's adapting to the environment, that's drawing more foreign fighters than ever before. We didn't see this, these numbers in Iraq or even Afghanistan during the Soviet Mujahideen. And interestingly and importantly in the testimony, they are plotting and planning to strike abroad and they are returning in more numbers than we ever saw, for example, in the Iraq context. And so they're going there fighting and dying in the fight, but a lot of them are training, surviving, and returning home. And you've heard this now from the British officials, and you heard it from the intelligence experts. So how do we, how does the U.S., how do our Western partners deny them safe havens in Syria? How do we reduce that, that operating space and shrink, shrink in on them? Uh, Bob, this, this is among the thorniest of policy and intelligence and counterterrorism problems because we now have two primary policy goals there. We don't want to see the survival of Assad, but we also don't want to see the rebirth of Al-Qaeda. Um, and we're not on the ground, and we're not going to put boots on the ground. Um, and we've demonstrated, frankly, an inability to really affect the environment in any real way or willingness to do so. Uh, but I think part of this goes to the strengthening of the Free Syrian Army and the more moderate elements that are actually fighting the Al-Qaeda uh, elements of the rebellion. Um, strengthening their hand within the opposition, and you've seen a little bit of that in the negotiations in Syria, where they've gotten more political voice and credibility. But they need arms, they need to be able to fight al-Qaeda. Uh, and then I think we need to work with our allies in the region, allies like Turkey and Jordan, which are directly threatened by the rise of these extremists, to have them take more ownership of, over blocking the flows of funds, people, foreign fighters, and materiel into the environment. Very but it's a very complicated problem. That's a difficult one and one that's going to be with us for a while. Yeah. Juan, thanks as always. Thank you, Bob. Thanks to you for watching Flashpoints. I'm Bob Orr. We will see you next time.